Hello! Hi everyone! Thank you for joining me and welcome to a new episode of the TZ TV live show. Thanks to all of you who are already watching and for commenting below. Hi David. Uh, when you're on YouTube, I don't actually see your name. Sometimes I just have the name of your YouTube channel. So my not cards. Hello. I just don't know your real name. Irma, Katie and Jack on uh, Facebook. Uh, so happy I made it. Okay, glad, glad to see you guys here. So today is a little bit different Hello. than what I do usually. Ah, uh, wait. Thank okay. you for joining me and welcome to a new episode. Ah, okay. Sorry, I had another window open so there was a little bit of echo there. Uh, and I could hear myself talk, which is never really nice. <laughs> so I was just saying, some uh, today is a little bit different than what I do usually. Usually I have a bit more structure in my live show. So I give you a step-by-step -step process and we review, you know, a few act uh, actionable tips and advice. Today what we're doing is really answering your question and questions that you might have around blogging. So I've been blogging myself for years now. I've had different blogs. Um, the one I run at the moment is tizard.co obviously and it's turned into my full-time business. But I had a few other blogs experience before and I've worked with many people who had blogs and integrated it in their marketing strategies. So I'm happy to give you advice and tips on that. I don't have a set opinion regarding whether you should have a blog or not. So I'm not here preaching and saying, you know, you should have a blog or you definitely shouldn't. There's scenarios where it's going to be a good solution for you, others where it won't. So what I did, I think it was last week or 10 days ago around that, I asked in my Facebook group, you know, what are your questions? What are your concerns? What are your struggles when it comes to blogging? And so I had a bunch of people telling me what they were struggling with. And so today I'm going to answer those exact questions. So if you've asked questions to me a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, then it's going to get answered right now. And if you have questions that come up while we talk, then make sure you comment as well. And I'll do my best in the time frame we have to but to answer them <laughs> and maybe people in the comments can answer your questions as well and we can all share uh information this way so does that work for everyone we've got larry Demetra, danny oh danny you made it i wasn't sure i just saw your comment asking what it was in new york time zone uh cindy margaret uh gaslight floral sorry i don't have your name but hello and thanks for being here with me guys so i'm just going to open up those comments uh Et le bonjour de Toulouse. Bonjour. <laughs> a little bit of a message in French. Um, okay. So let's go. So first question was from Anne. And Anne says, I sell and dyed scarves. I have no idea what I would write about other than the occasional new product. Personally, I don't like blogs in which the writer talks incessantly about herself, her memories, her thought processes. So I would need to come up with something to say. So very good point here, Anne. Um, I think when you're trying to think about, okay, what should I talk about? And I'm going to sound like a broken record here again, but it's useful to think about your ideal customers and what they would be interested in. So if you're to write a blog and share on Pinterest, for example, what would people search for and what would people actually click on? And for artists, the process behind the work can work. But you're right, it doesn't really necessarily work for everyone or for every shop. And if it's not for you, and if you think that's not going to work for your customers, then that's fine. Then absolutely don't do that <laughs> because it's not going to work. And you have to keep your ideal customers in mind. And let's be honest, you have to keep your goal in mind, which is always making sales. So if sharing, uh, you know, thought processes and all that kind of stuff that you just mentioned in your blog is not going to help you get more sales and connect with people in a way that's going to make them want to purchase your items, then I would definitely stay away from it. The questions that you want to be asking yourself when you're a bit stuck when it comes to what am I going to write about is what would your people, and when I say your people, I mean your ideal customers would be interested in? What objections could they have before purchasing your products? What could they be curious about? Something that you might be willing to share with them that they don't know about, that they'd be interested in knowing about your products. Uh, and what could help them just really picture themselves using your products and make them, you know, it, it's really hard online. You can't touch, you can't really have this connection with a product that you would have in a retail store. So anything you can do for people to help them picture what it would be to actually receive and use your product will be useful. So I actually have an example here for you, Anne, that I went and looked up this morning. It's another, let me see, let me share my screen for a sec. Yay, working, that was quick. Okay, 
So this is another shop that sells embroidery items, jewelry, and also scarves. So what they do, and that's the blog, they actually do mini, really short tutorials on how to wear the scarf because, and I really like that because myself, I would have no, and I have a lot of scarves and I have no idea how to wear them because I simply don't know how to knot them properly and what to do with them and how to style them. And I always feel like I'm trying to wear them because I like the patterns on mine or, you know, I like them, but I just don't know how to wear them. So they just stay in my, in my wardrobe and I never wear them. So here what she's doing is she's got a few different ideas of how you can wear them and she shows you how to actually do the actual knot, if that makes sense. Um, so, and I think on the previous page here, there was a bit more. Yeah, see this one for here, that would be really nice for me, but I would have no idea how to do this myself. The wrapped headscarf, this one is a little front knot. So as you can see, this isn't related to uh, let me go back to the video here. This isn't related to necessarily your thought process, you know, the choice behind the color or how, how you dye, uh, dye, the, dye the scarf. Sorry, French brain at 7 a.m. Not quite awake yet. But it's all about your customers. What do they need to know? How will they use the products? And when I see those those kind of images with those different styles, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that would work really well with another item I might have in my wardrobe and that makes me want to purchase your product. It's also quicker to do than a long informational blog post because it's really just a couple of steps of, or even just pictures of yourself actually doing the knot and showing how to do it. So here are a few examples of things that you can do to, to change the angle and not necessarily share what's going on behind the business and behind the creation process. If you're not comfortable with it, it's always something you can do, but you know, to put the focus on your customers or your ideal customers instead. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if you're live or not. Uh, I'm not seeing you in the comments, so maybe not, but I'll keep going. You can always watch your replay. Um, next I've got Rebecca. Rebecca says, I started a blog, but I barely add to it because I don't know what to write about and it doesn't get much traffic. I sell physical products for pets and I feel like I have, a, I have a decent idea of my customers, but what they've enjoyed in the past is more photo based. I think they'd enjoy featuring other people's products, photos and ideas from time to time instead of my processes and stories. Any tips for sharing content in a blog? And I could do that, but then I start thinking about time versus benefit. Is blogging like that worth it for physical products? So there's a few questions here in your question, Rebecca. The first one is, similar to what we've just covered with Anne, which is, I don't think people are going to be interested in the behind the scene of my processes and how I create my product. So what do I talk about? So that's kind of what we just covered with Anne, changing the focus and, and putting the blog back about, you know, what your customers would actually be interested in. And then, and I'll start with that. It's your last question in that comment, which is, is blogging worth it really for physical products? And I think it's a very important question. It's a very good one that we definitely need to address in this Q and A. And my really short answer to that would be blogging is worth it only if you do it strategically. Blogging just for the sake of having a blog is going to be an absolute waste of time. Now it can be a real uh, force in your marketing strategy and really help you leverage different platform and, and therefore bring more traffic and more sales to your shop. So yes, it can be worth it, but it has to be done strategically. And so let me explain a bit more what I mean. Um, when we talk about blogging, there's this myth that blogging is a source of traffic. Or it's not really a myth, but it's something that people say. People will say, you know, start a blog to get traffic to your shop. The reality is a little bit different. You can start a blog tomorrow or today and it's not going to leverage, like, it's not necessarily going to bring more traffic to your store instantly. No one is going to know about this beautiful blog of yours if you don't actually talk about it. So it's, it's, it's a weird thing where you need to actually market and promote your blog so that you can bring traffic to your store. And this is where a lot of people are probably thinking, well, Deb, I'm already struggling to get traffic to my store. I'm not going to start focusing on bringing traffic to my blog because I honestly don't have time for that. But it's, it's, they work in pair, they work together. So the blog, the way you blog strategically is that you use your blog as a content source that then you can, um, spread and, and share on different platforms. 
So it's a platform to share your content and sharing your content is the base of any good traffic strategy. You're always going to need to share something out there in the world on the internet for people to find it and come back to your store. And your blog does that for you. So you would have this one article and then you can share it on Pinterest, on Facebook, on Instagram, the same one, without having to wonder what am I gonna put on this and on this and on that. So that's how you would get people to your website via your blog and then grab the email address. You know, I want you guys to have an email list and then get them onto your email list and market to them and bring them back to your shop again and again so they can purchase from you. So that's really how blogging would work. Having a blog just there on your website, that's just a thing on your to-do list to do, but they're not really marketing it, not really leveraging it on other marketing platforms is not really going to do anything for you except, you know, t- like take time <laughs> out of your busy schedule just so you can write blogs that no one is going to find and read. So that's the power of blogging. That's how blogging strategically works. So why am I saying this? <laughs> it's definitely not to make it sound more complicated than it is because it's not, but it's because it's important to understand that your blog would work within your overall traffic strategy and you have to make that decision to decide whether it's worth it for you. So if you think that you can make it a focus on your marketing strategy, then yes, it's going to be worth it. If you don't think that you're going to be able to use it that way and that it's just going to be sitting on your site for people to read when they stumble upon it, then it might not be entirely worth it. Now in your niche, uh, which is the pet niche, the pet industry, um, and I'm not you know, 100% familiar with who your ideal customers exactly are, but you could, there is so many things you could talk about. You could even go full what I call informational blog if you don't want to talk about the processes behind your business, as you said in your comments. You could talk about anything, training advice for puppies and dogs, health advice, food advice. You could do review of accessories that you might not be selling and actually have guest experts doing blog posts for you on any anything dog or cat related. You could work with other shop and have them and and feature their products if they sell things that you don't sell that you know in targeted to the same people pet owners and then have them share your things on their blog so there's a lot that you can do here for content if that's something that you feel you would be happy doing if that doesn't appeal to you and you think that you're honestly not going to be able to be consistent with it or you think that it's not going to resonate with your target audience then it might not be worth it and you might be really just much better off doing focusing just on let's say Instagram. I've actually had a look I think at your Instagram unless I'm mixing you guys up but I believe uh, Rebecca you do crochet item and I love your Instagram. It's amazing. Your cat and your dog are like the best models and the pictures are actually really nice. There's some really funny ones in there. The cat was a little hot. It was so funny. I loved it. Um, So if you think that's where your people are instead, then I'm more than happy for you to focus exclusively on that. If you think that that type of content with the main image and the short caption is going to work better, then fine. You just have to decide whether that blogging strategy is going to work for you and how, that's the most important part, how you're going to leverage your blog to actually bring customers to your shop. If you're not seeing a link there or how to actually make that happen, then yeah, blogging might not be worth it. But it works really well if you decide to go with it. Um, Okay, next question. Uh, Oh, Deepa, hey, hi, Dave. Thank you for doing this. I know you wanted me to talk about blogging. (laughs) Oh, Anne is here. Okay, Anne, I'm not sure if you missed the my comment for you or not but if you have a follow-up question you can ask in the comments if i miss them during the live because the comments go too quickly while i'm chatting then i always come back and answer all the comments afterwards so um not a problem at all hey laura (laughs) um okay melanie is next melanie says does every maker really need a blog isn't instagram and facebook and the other social media platforms already fulfilling the purpose of connecting That's actually a great follow-up question uh, from Rebecca's question that I just answered. And the short answer is no, not all makers need a blog. You can absolutely, you can have a successful shop and a successful business without a blog. And Instagram can definitely be used as your main content sharing platform to get people to uh, connect, as you said, connect and engage with them and then direct them back to your shop long content form, which is just this fancy way of saying a long caption on Instagram, 
actually does surprisingly well. People actually like to read those long captions. It's not necessarily how Instagram started. And at first it was really just a couple of line of caption and an hashtag. Now people actually like to read those long caption and it does well. So you could definitely use Instagram as your main, um, yeah, as your main social media tool and way of sharing content and information with your audience. If you think that this is where your audience spend the most time. So you, you can build a business without a blog. Absolutely. Now it doesn't mean that blogging doesn't work. It works as well. It's again, all about doing things strategically. So the question is always, you know, how is Instagram or insert whatever you want to use Instagram or my blog going to help me with my traffic, building my email list and actually directing customers to my store so that I can make sales. If you think you can do that with Instagram, then absolutely go for it. As long as you do it strategically, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, next is Brenda. Brenda says, how often should you post to the blog? Really good question. This one, this is where you're all waiting for me to say, Oh, it doesn't matter, <laughs> but it does matter. Um, there isn't one perfect answer for that though. The answer would be as often as you can while being consistent with it, which is probably the most important word in the sentence, consistent and interesting to your audience. So if you're thinking about blogging, twice a month, then the question would be, can you blog twice a month and keep up with it? Consistency being key and write about things that will interest it, interest your audience and serve your bigger goal, which is always get traffic and sales. If you don't think that you'll be able to do that, then drop back to once a month. Really, you can blog anywhere from, I'd say weekly, if that's your absolute main focus and that's really the driver of your marketing strategy. That's what you use uh, to, to really share your uh, message and communicate with your audience, then weekly would be the best if that's your main marketing focus. But you can also go as low as once a month, even once every couple of months, although that's really just maintaining your blog and using it strategically if you're only doing it every couple of months. So you have to pick your, for yourself. The most important thing is be consistent with it. Keep things interesting for your audience. So don't just write because you, you said you're going to write every week and you don't really have an idea. So you're just writing about something that's not going to help your marketing and your traffic and your sales. And if that's fine, then if that's the perfect frequency for you, I know that's not a perfect example, uh, a perfect answer, but it really is the truth. Um, the one thing I'd say though, is that there is nothing worse than getting onto a shop. There's a blog uh, item on the menu. You click on it. And the last blog that was updated was like six months ago or two years ago. That's bad. If that, that just looks like the shop has been left a bit alone. And so you, you start losing that trust with your visitor because you automatically start wondering, well, if they've got a blog and they don't, you know, and they've last time they've blogged was in 2015, then how, how long is it going to take for me to get my order delivered? And are they really, is this an active shop? So if you're not blogging consistently, and if you're not able to maintain that, then at least keep that away from your main navigation bar so that people don't, you know, notice these things because it's just, it's not a good look. Um, okay. Next is hi, Eva. Uh, Danny is saying, I think she's mentioning, she's talking about Instagram. That's what I have uh, to focus on right now. So she's focusing on Instagram until it's flowing well, and then I can possibly move to blogging. Um, so yeah, that's a very good strategy. Um, I always say you guys don't try to do too much and then do everything in a mediocre way. If you can focus on one platform and you decide it's Instagram instead of blogging, then go and do that, but just do it really well. Once you've got your routine and your processes to have that in place, you have more room to actually set up a blog and start blogging strategically, then do that. That works fine for me. Uh, okay. What I feel like I was missing one. Oh yeah. Fiona. Fiona says, I find it hard to get ideas for blog posts and I haven't done a post for months. <laughs> I'm always afraid that what I write about is boring or too short or too long. So I actually went and looked at your shops and your blog, Fiona, and I have to say it was beautiful. I loved all of your item. I love that you're already stocking Halloween items as well. Uh, your pictures are really nicely lit. Your products are very, very cute. I love that you mix match pattern and colors. So yeah, very nice. Anyway, back to your question, which is finding it hard to get ideas for blog posts and being afraid that what you write about is boring, too short or too long. So, 
The thing that I will say is that when I went to visit your blog, I noticed they're mostly tutorials um, and they're also very well done. There's a lot of images, clear steps, and it really did make me want to take my sewing machine out of my, my sewing machine table is actually what I've got my computer on at the moment. So just below, <laughs> it's, it's made me want to take it out and try a few things, although I really not, I'm not really skilled at it, but anyway, it worked. So it wasn't boring. It was engaging. It was done well. The only concern I had was I couldn't necessarily find a link to your shop. I think there might have been something in the sidebar with a little icon for your Etsy shop, but on the blog in general, there was nothing in the menu. There's no links inside of your blog article linking me back to products that you might be selling. And so my question to you would be, are people interested in the, tut uh, the people who are interested in your tutorials, are they the same that are also interested in buying your products or is this completely different and so that's two completely different audiences. Because if the people who like to read and find tutorials to learn how to do a few things with a sewing machine are not the same people as your ideal customers, then we have a gap here that's a problem, an issue in your marketing strategy. If they are the same, then it's wonderful. But then use your blog to link back to your shop much more than what you're doing right now and even maybe insert links of your products or categories of products and collection inside of your blog to make sure that if someone finds you, let's say on Pinterest for a tutorial you've made, and then they direct it to your blog, they know they can go back to your shop and buy your product. So that it, there's, there's more of a, of a flow with that and the way the customer journey and the way your, your customers find you and then actually access your blogs and access your shops. If those two people are different, if someone that's interested in tutorial is not someone who would necessarily be interested in buying your products, which I'm feeling might be what's happening because if I know how to make all of the things that you sell myself, then I'm probably not going to buy it. The reason I would be a customer of yours is because I am not good at, at, with my sewing machine. So when, uh, you know, I would purchase from you for that reason. And so if that's the case, then your blog is not serving your Etsy shop and it's not serving the purpose it's there for, which is marketing, traffic and sales. So I would recommend you take a look at your statistics. If you have Google Analytics, for example, that would be the best place. And really have a look, are your blog visitors then heading over to your shop? If that's working, then cool. If not, then you know we might have a little problem here and you might need to change the angle of your blog and instead of doing tutorials, maybe do, um, you know, use it as a newsroom, what I call a newsroom. It's a really weird name, but that's what I call it, uh, which would be, you know, a place where you share your new collection, the different fabric that you have for the upcoming season and all sorts of different ideas that we've mentioned uh, when I answer the other questions today as well, keeping your audience in mind and what are they interested in. So I hope this helped. Uh, but no, it wasn't boring. It wasn't necessarily too short or too long. I was just a bit worried when I looked at your blog that maybe it wasn't serving your bigger, more general marketing purpose. Um, I don't know if you're here, actually, if you're now or not. I'm talking to you like you are, but maybe you'll be watching the replay. Uh, okay, Irma says, I had to step away. Oh, I have to step away. Uh, but I have a question. What if you have two different... Oh, no, the comment just gone. Wait. What if you have two different ideal customers? Should every other blog address one group and then the other month the other group? Um, yeah, that's something you can do. As long as there's not completely different that there should actually be two different shop or two different blog, you can absolutely do that. So you could have categories on your blog and you could have uh, a blog in with each category one time or two or it's okay if it's not a perfect 50-50 as well. I mean, as long as you as you keep it overall um, <laughs> a fair split, it's fine if you were for a couple of weeks to talk more about something because it's more relevant at that time of the year for that particular ideal customer and then focus on, on the other stuff later on in the year. So that's fine as long as it's clearly, uh, you know, you can tag your blog post. I don't know what you use to blog, but if you're on WordPress, you can have categories, you can tag them. Just make sure that you split that and make sure that it's still overall the same group of people and that it's not completely different because if not, it's it's going to look a little bit funny. Um, Danny says, that's why I was wondering about blogging or even behind the scenes. 
showing how I make my items and tutorials. So yeah, it's it's something you can absolutely do. And I think someone asked about how to make money for a blog as well. So it's something we can talk about later. But keep in mind, if people doing the tutorials are not the same people as the one who would be interested in buying your products, then that blog doesn't serve you as a handmade shop owners in terms of making more sales. So it's really, you know, making sure that this is going to serve you. If not, you're just having a tutorial blog and that's a completely different business model than your handmade shop. Uh, uh, okay, Deepa is saying, I'm having trouble to get people to my blog on my site. Just, just now learning about SEOs. I was told to send a newsletter with a teaser and link to the blog on your website. The question is, how do you know how much to put to tease people into clicking the link to get over to the website? This feels hard to do. Okay, so what I like to do with that is, uh, that's what I do in my newsletter, is clearly stating what they're going to get from the article. So what are you going to talk about and why should they click? And, you know, don't say things like, you should click because, but just naturally explain what are they going to, what's the win for them if they read this blog post? So if they read this blog post, are they going to learn ABC or are they going to know how to do, you know, X, Y, Z without necessarily getting into the details of the article itself, just explain how it's going to serve them. If they want to learn more, the button is there or the link is there. So don't overthink it really. Um, it's important with the newsletter that you just sometimes admit that scent is better than perfect. And you will notice as you get better as writing those little teaser, what worked and what didn't work in your stats, in your email service provider. So you'll be able to adjust that. But yeah, the idea is really just to tell them what's in the blog, how is it going to serve them? Just keep in mind, people want to know what's in it for me all the time. That's why you always have to, you know, to ask yourself when you write any type of copy, what's in it for me is a question they want you to answer. So what's in it for them? What's good about this blog? Explain that in the best way you can. And then if they are interested in that, <laughs> then they'll click on the link. Hello from Portugal. Hello. Um, Heather is saying you can also create long form content on your site that you don't label as a blog, but under a different heading. If you can't be regular enough with a blog, I'm not experienced enough to know a Google response to that strategy though. Heather, that's a great tip. I love that. Um, I absolutely love that. That's why some people call it news or newsroom, or it could just be a, a lookbook if what you're doing is mostly posting pictures and not really a blog. So a blog can really be redefined as well to really fit whatever you want to do with it. I think we have to get out of you know this idea that a blog is like this two long two pages of article with headings and subheadings and this is not necessarily what a blog is. A blog is just really sharing content. A blog could also be a vlog, which is video. It could be mostly pictures. And then in this case, you can, in terms, instead of calling it a blog, call it a lookbook or something like that. So yeah, you don't have to label it a, a blog. And when you do that, that's true. People expect less in terms of how consistent you, you are with it. Whereas when you click on blog and it hasn't been updated in two years, then it does look a little bit funny. So great tip here, Heather. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, okay, where was I? Next is, just uh, I'm just crawling past those. Okay, Sandra asked, um, I tried doing a blog years ago. My main problems were, one, finding things to write about, two, getting found by other people, three, making money on my blog, Four, finding the right thing people are looking for, craft, books, materials, wholesalers, my work, other people work, techniques, videos, etc. And what would all of this do to my ability to sell my own stuff? And number five, how do we find the time to do a blog while making our own stuff, marketing it, selling it, accounting and bookkeeping, and so many hassle and childcare tasks? What is the return of, on investment of doing a blog? If you can answer that, then I'm all in. <laughs> Sandra, I love your honesty and I love uh, your just being very straightforward here saying, look, I've got other things to do already that are keeping me really busy. So this thing has to be working for me. It has to be a return on investment on my time and money if you invest money in your blog, but you can do a blog for free. So 
mostly if I'm going to spend time on this, how is it going to serve me? And I love this because that's what I've been trying to tell you since we started this um, live Q&A is that it's, I want you to do a blog only if you're doing it strategically. If you're just blogging for blogging and it's not working with your marketing strategy, then it serves no purpose at all. And I agree with Sandra, then just leave it on the side because it's never going to help you actually, you know, sell and get traffic. So what I'll do is, uh, there's a lot of things in this comment, so I'll just go one by one. So number one was uh, finding things to write about. So, and actually that's kind of like what you said in later as well, finding um, the right thing people are looking for. So I'll answer those, those two questions together. Uh, number two was getting fined by others. So that's really the, the traffic strategy for your blog, right? I'm assuming you're saying that if I have a blog, then how do people actually find it? And this is what I was saying, I think in answer to Rebecca's question just a bit before, which is your blog in itself, and you're right with that, is not going to suddenly magically generate traffic to your shop. What it do is, is give you this content platform that you can then use to share across all uh, all the social media platform. So that's definitely one of the benefits because I know it sounds like it's more work, like, oh, well, now I also have to bring traffic to my blog on top of my shop, but really it works in synergy. So it gets tiresome to try to find stuff to share on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest as well. Like at some stage, you, you I'm sure you guys have come across that problem when you're like, what am I going to talk about this time? What's going to be my caption? <laughs> like, what I'm running out of ideas. When you have a blog, you can use that one blog, that one piece of content, and then pretty much repurpose it on all of these different um, channels, social media channels. So that's how the traffic strategy actually works. Your blog isn't the thing that brings you traffic, it's what's helping you generate traffic across all the social media platform back to your store. Uh, number three was making money on my blog. Good question. Uh, okay. That's going to tie back to what I was saying about writing tutorials. There's two type of business models I want to talk about here. There's one where your blog is actually making money directly, like that's the money maker. And the way you do that is by selling ads on your blog or having affiliate articles and affiliate links. So you generating generating sales for someone else and you're taking commission from that. So that work well for things like tutorials. You can have a tutorials and you're referring to the, you know, tools and the materials and supplies that you're using for this specific tutorial and then you're making money from the sales of those materials and supplies. Or you have a banner on your blog and in your sidebar, maybe at the top on the sidebar and you're selling ads in it to actually make money from it. That works well for tutorials again. The reality of that is that you need a lot of traffic to your blog to actually make a decent living from doing that. So that's the first type of business model for, for a blog, which is actually generating money directly from it. The second way to make money from your blog, and that's the one I'm mostly interest, interested in talking to you about, is your blog isn't directly making money. So you know, you're not cashing in a hundred bucks every time you write a blog post, sadly, but it supports your handmade shop. So it doesn't make money per se, but it gets people to your site, it gets them to sign up to your email list uh, once they're on your blog, and that's how you bring them back and get them to buy and really build that connection and that relationship and send them offers and promotion and make sure that they eventually purchase from you. So that's how your blog would actually help you make money. It wouldn't actually be making money directly unless you've got a gigantic amount of traffic and then you can sell through affiliate links and you know advertisement space on your blog. I hope that makes sense. Uh, was there another question? Yes, number four. Finding the right thing people are looking for. Yes, which was kind of like your first question as well, which is finding things to write about. So I'm not sure what you actually sell, uh, so it's a little bit hard to brainstorm just like that without knowing, but the general idea is that you can do what I call like um, newsroom or news, so you, you could tease people about new collection or new products coming up. So that means that without necessarily being, you know, getting into too many details, just sharing, you know, the next fabrics that are coming up or the next colors that are coming up in the next collection, tease that, tease your new product, 
then once they are actually live and ready to shop, announce it on your blog and so introduce your new product, your new collection. That's a blog. A blog doesn't have to be a story. It can just be an actual news or an announcement. You can also do behind the scenes on processes. Um, so for example, uh, Anne with your scarves, uh, you could, I, I know I would love to understand how you actually dye those beautiful, like take those beautiful colors and turn that into, you know, a beautiful dye. I know it's something that I would be really interested in knowing and that would make me look at your product thinking this is so special and, and actually increase the perceived value of your product because I would be like, look how unique and special this scarf is. So the behind the behind the scenes and processes can be interested for interesting for that. Uh, Danny, that would work for you as well with your uh, flowers, how you actually make them and how you know intricate and precise and time consuming that work would be. That makes your product really special and that's you know informing your, your ideal customers of the work you're doing and the value in your product. And it's also, if they're curious about it, it's there for them to see. So it's not a tutorial, but it's explaining how you make your product, um, which is good because it means you don't have to get in as many details as if you were doing a tutorials, but you're still sharing the behind the scenes. Another group of example would be um, how to. So that's what we saw, uh, what we, I show you about the actual knot for the scarf example. So how to use it, are you wear, how to wear it, how to style it. Uh, so that's really good. That works really well for clothing or jewelry type of shops. How to even, uh, look after whatever they just purchased. So if they, if you sell leather items, you can have a blog on how to like keep it clean or keep it, you know, how to, uh, or jewelry even, how to clean your silver pieces, things like that. Uh, and then lastly, the fourth block would be informational. So that would be, for example, again, Rebecca, when we were talking about the pet niche and the pet industry, you know, um, advice on how to train your puppy and things like that, which isn't necessarily related directly to your product, but would interest people who are looking to purchase things for their puppy because they just had a puppy. So they want to know how to train it and have good tips on health and food and accessories reviews and also at the same time shop your beautiful crochet items. So here are a few examples, new collection, new products and teasers, behind the scenes on processes, uh, how to, so how to wear, how to style, how to clean, all of that stuff and more informational which is more of a what we think of when we usually think of a blog. So these are four groups of ideas for you Sandra and for anyone else listening. Um, EMR said thanks for the reply. Pam says, Pamela says, I blog with my teaching five days a week and doesn't need to be so detailed. I'm not sure, Pamela, what you are referring to. If I missed something before, uh, just explain a bit more in the comment and I'll, I'll try to come back to it. And if I don't have time for it, I'll make sure to always reply when I go offline. Um... Danny says, I'm, I'm getting really bad service. I keep losing you. I'll catch your replay. That's okay, Danny. You go. Uh, it's your daughter's cheer practice. Okay, you go and do what you have to do. Uh, okay, so next question is Heidi. Heidi says, I wouldn't have any idea what to talk about in a blog. It's been suggested I do one for my business as a way for people to get to know me. Uh, but if it's not jewelry related, would it make re would it really make sense to do one? Well, I think that's uh, what I just answered in the in the question just before. Actually, with those four groups of things you can blog about, it doesn't have to be always about jewelry. It could be actual lookbook. It could be about trends in the season and how to you know the best style for the summer or anything like that that's not necessarily jewelry but i would tie in with it so that you can always use that as a platform to say by the way my products would work perfectly fine with this really cute summer outfit for example it could be anything as long as your ideal customer find it interesting and it will help you make sales at the same time uh, a good blog that you might want to go and check out uh, if you do jewelry is the one from Megan Omen. Um, she does statement pieces and she always gives first behind the scenes in what's going on. So a new collection release, all of that will appear on her blog. So that's something you can do. But also she will wear uh, jewelry and say, you know, this worked really nice with, you know, uh, uh, what was the last one I, I saw? Um, 
something about earrings being big and really nice for summer or you know she just helps you understand how you could actually wear those pieces that she sells so it's really in the r2 use categories or the news so new collection new product and teasers categories but there's definitely a way you can blog when you sell jewelry uh ether is saying i had a business blog several years ago it was for a service not for my handmade business I created it from scratch, including adding all the widgets and doing my own SEO. It was a ton of work and ended up being a headache when it got hacked. Oh yeah, that's not good. Um, right now, my handmade business is my side business and I already struggle to find time to create and post on social media. I haven't started selling online yet and I cannot imagine trying to find time to start and write a blog. Ever, my very honest reply to that is because you said I haven't started selling online yet then in this case, I would agree that this doesn't sound like it's the right fit for you at this time. Maybe later if you want to you know, reassess your strategy when you start selling online and ask yourself, would a blog actually work for me? But at the moment, I agree. Waste of time. Don't, uh, don't, don't do that if you're not trying to sell online. Um, okay, next is Penny. Penny says, I suppose I have what, would be called, what could be called a blog, but I've only managed to post about three or four times so far this year. I really don't know what to write about and I struggle to find the time when I do have an idea. So I actually went to see your blog, Penny. I loved your uh, cards and your website's really pretty. And your blog didn't appear as dead to me, although you only posted three or four times this year. I didn't look at it thinking, ah, oh, this isn't really keep updated, you know, uh, kept updated. Because, and the reason for that is what we mentioned with Ether in the comments before, which is you called it, I believe, news. And it's not necessarily on your main menu. So it's under the about section on your website or something like that. So I thought this was a really nice way of it to be there. But if it's not, if you're not blogging all the time, then it's not, you know, forefront on your homepage. So it didn't appear as dead to me. It still felt like it was updated pretty regularly. And I didn't think, oh, this is a dead time when I visited it. Um, it actually, I had a really good first impression of it. Uh, consistency, as I was saying, is the most important. And so that's something that you yeah, look like you did. It looked like you were announcing your new collections. And every new season, there was a new announcement, which made sense. So uh, all good, in my opinion, for that. I actually do like the way you, you use your blog. You seem to, to, be doing, um, to be doing fine with it. If you can find time to blog more, that's fine. But I think that at the moment, if it's working for you that way, then... Keep doing, keep doing it this way. Uh, something that I really liked and I want to share it because it's a good tip for other people is there was a blog and I really can't remember, but it was something about popping the champagne or there was a, an illustration on the card was pop the bubbly or pop the champagne. And what I really liked, it was, it was really just an announcement of a new collection or a new product that you had, but then you explained it a little bit. It was just a short text, which is fine. And then it was redirecting people to your product and to your actual shop. So, you know, if you like it, here's the link with the actual little thumbnail and the link to your shop. And I thought that was great because that tells me your thinking was, you know, the whole picture in mind, which is I'm not just blogging for blogging. I'm blogging to direct people to my shop and to my product. And I thought that was done really well. So congrats on that. Uh, oh, second part of your question. Sorry, I missed that. So I wonder if anyone reads uh, blogs anymore or has Facebook killed all that? I much prefer a blog. I actually really dislike Facebook, but most of the blogs I find on many subjects haven't been updated in years. So I guess my question is, are there, are there certain blo blogging platforms that will get more exposure over others and is it worth it in the end? I hope so. So um, Facebook, Facebook hasn't killed blogging. Um, it's Facebook is a completely different type of content than what blogging is. It comes back to what I was saying about Facebook being used to share your blog posts so that people go and read your blog posts on your actual website or blog. There is definitely no way blogging is dead. I know it's something that people say a lot. Blogging has changed, yes, but it's not dead. <laughs> definitely not. I can tell you that first thing because that's my main traffic driver from my own business and I know it is for many, many other businesses online. E-commerce, retailers, and service businesses, all of that. It works, blogging works for all of them. So Facebook hasn't killed that. It has, it has simply brought, it's, it's just a new way people access information. So most likely people will go and read a blog either because they are subscribed to the newsletter and got a link to it 
they find on Pinterest or it's been shared on Instagram and Facebook with a link to go and read it. And so they're going to go and do that. So it's just a way of actually promoting your, your articles and your blogs. Now, when you say, is there, are there certain blogging platforms that will get more exposure over others? No. So if, or I hope I'm understanding your question well, but if you're thinking about, you know, if I blog on WordPress, is it different than if I blog on uh, Blogspot or whatever other platform there is? No. <laughs> the the way you're going to get exposure is by marketing and directing traffic to your blog. And so that is going to come from Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, things like that. And where you're actually hosting and blogging and writing your articles is not going to have an influence on that. It's all about marketing your blog and your shop. Uh, Wendy, next question. I started blogspot.com a few years ago when I was a teacher purely for fun. What I was blogging about, my flannel balls that I use in my classroom, ended up turning into my business, but my audience has changed. Well, that's pretty good that it's turned into a business for you. I felt super comfortable blogging when I was talking to other teachers, but now I feel I need to market more towards parents. And since I'm not one of those, I have no idea what to write about. I want to be an expert on my topic if I'm going to write about it, but I'm not an expert from the parent angle. Okay, that makes sense. I understand that you might not feel really comfortable talking about something you are not an expert at. (laughs) That's definitely something I wouldn't be comfortable doing either and that's just normal. So first, congrats on uh, your blog turning into a business. Congrats on paying attention to the audience change as well. It might sound really obvious to you, but we've talked about that a lot today, about wondering who is your audience, knowing what they want to hear, what they want to read, and you're obviously paying attention to it because you've noticed that change. So well done. That is not actually uh, something that many people do or do correctly. Now, regarding what to blog about in your case, if I was you, I'm trying to put myself into your shoes and I wanted to keep the blog up, but I didn't really know you know, enough about parenting, which is, by the way, totally my situation because I don't have kids myself. I was just trying to change my vision for the blog and the way that my my angle on it. So instead of seeing it as a place where you as an expert teach or inform other parents, then why not seeing it as a platform for exchange? So you could have parents sharing their own stories, their own tips, their own advice, and learn about other parents' problems, solutions, all of that stuff. Uh, you could have a blog where you ask questions to parents or you could have, you know, you know where there's always this meet the makers and things like that or behind behind the business, all of this type of blog. You could have that, that type of blog article where it could be anonymous or not and you could just ask parents a few questions that they answer in writing and that's a blog post. And so it's a way for parents to read what other parents are thinking, doing, trying and and, and, and engage with that, which would create a community which is really nice as well. Uh, you could also, and that's actually a, a really nice way to save time as well, is inviting other people to blog on your blog. So guest blogging uh, with other experts. So if there's someone that's, you know, not like that has kids and that's things to share about that, then you could invite them to actually write a blog post on your own blog. And there's a lot of people that would be willing to do that for more exposure because, you know, a lot of people are actually looking forward to guest blogging on other platforms. So there's there's ways you can create content for that blog without it coming directly from you. You can just be the person that's uh, organizing it and putting it under one roof, which is your blog, without it necessarily being you writing an expert article on parenting. So that would be what I would consider doing if I was in your shoes. Uh, okay. Jane. Let me have a little sip of water here, guys. Oh my God, there is so many comments. I can't keep track. I'm seeing very long comments as well. I'll just keep going on the Q&A that I had from the Facebook group that because people generously shared the struggles with me. So it's important for me to make sure I cover the answers. And then I'll go back to all the comments um, uh, if I don't have time to answer them live because I'm, I'm feeling like if not, I'm just going to get too distracted between the two. Um, okay. Jane says, uh, how in the world do people do an editorial calendar? <laughs> it seems so difficult to plan months ahead. Okay. It is a bit of a brain twister at first. Once you get it though, it's the best thing you've ever done and you won't be able to remember how it felt 
when you didn't have one because it's freedom. You're like, oh, I know what's happening for the next three months. Beautiful. If you don't know how to start filling this out and you're facing a calendar and going, okay, I need to plan for the next three months and the next you know, semester or whatever, and I have no idea what I'm going to be sharing, then look at those dates and those months and ask yourself a couple of questions. The first one would be, what's coming up in on your side of the business? So in your shop, product-wise, collection-wise, uh, season-wise, is there going to be a new product release? Anything like that. If so, announce it, tease it. And that's probably already going to feel a lot of room in that editorial calendar. And that's also making sure that you keep the focus on your product, your brand, and what's going to bring sales. The next question I would ask myself is the other side of this equation, which is what's coming up, not in my world, but in my audience world. So what are they going to go through in the next few months? If you're chatting to parents, that's your ideal customers, for example, and it's back to school in two weeks, then that's definitely something that you would block out as I'm going to talk about back to school or, you know, same thing just before the summer holidays. I'm going to talk about the summer holidays coming up and activities for kids and things like that. What is coming up in your audience world that they're going to be uh, engaging with, doing, participating in, and talk about it? Once you've done those two things, you'll already have a lot of those uh, spots in your editorial calendar filled out. And then the last thing would be if you have any live events as well. But I guess that's part of the first question, which is what's happening in your world, in your shop, um, in your business. So if you're doing any live markets, live anything, then I would put that in my editorial calendar as well and announce it. Just say, hey, I'm going to be at the Glebe market next month, blah, blah, blah. Here's how to find me. So really those two those two sides of the story, what's coming up for your audience, what's coming up in your shop, and talk about those two things and put those dates into this calendar. I hope that helps start the brainstorm process. Um, Beth is saying all of the above. <laughs> Um, uh, my main question on starting a blog is the type of content to include. On my Instagram, I post about my home since I make, oh yeah, yeah, Beth, I went and checked your shop as well. Okay. On my Instagram, I post about my home since I make home decor items and show my pillows and costas every so often, but not really sure what to post about on my blog. So it's mainly a question of content. Okay. So I remember visiting your blog, your website. I believe you have a blog and then it links to an Etsy shop, but the blog itself, the website itself looked really nice, looked really modern. The layout was, uh, yeah, was modern and clean and I really liked it. So congrats on doing that. It's already a big part of the process of having a blog. So the, my question would be, if you are already doing things on Instagram, what works? What works on Instagram? What's your audience most, uh, engage, like engaging the most ways, liking, commenting, what's working there? take that over to your blog as well. That's the first thing I would look into. And then in your niche, I mean, there is that many ideas that are coming to mind right now. Uh, what first comes to mind is, you know, always starting obviously with what would my ideal customer be interested in? What do they need help with? Uh, how can I give them information about, uh, you know, information or tips that could indirectly help them or make them want to buy my product? And in your industry, so home decor, um, there is that many things that you could share about home decor tips, home styling, uh, seasonal articles as well, you know, how to quickly decorate your home for Christmas on a budget or, you know, whatever works for your audience and your brand positioning. But you could insert your items and your products in those recommendations, you know, like how to achieve the perfect farmhouse, farm, uh, kitchen style, um, with only a few items or tricks or whatever, and then you could list them and list to the shops, uh, the items on your shop that would work really well for this type of um, home decor, for example. So there's definitely, and that's just an, that's, there's really potential there because that's something, for example, on Pinterest that people look for all the time, home decor, home styling, it's really something that's big over on Pinterest. So having a blog to share that content and, and direct them back to your store, uh, would really work well for you. And there's a lot of how to and advice type blog that you can do in that niche. Um, yeah. So definitely don't be afraid of doing that. 
okay i think this is the end of the questions that i had from my facebook group just scrolling and yeah i think i've done them all oh have i done brenda yeah okay so yes this was uh, quite a bit you guys we oh my god it's been an hour already um Oh, Leslie says, could you repeat the name of the jewelry blog? It's Megan Oman. Oman is A-U-M-A-N. If you type it, you'll find her. She's a very successful jewelry designer. Um, and her blog is short to the point and it's a really good inspiration if you don't know where to start with it. Where do you recommend that's Tracy that once starts their blog, blog host service provider? Uh, I always tend to recommend WordPress. If you, well, if you already have a Shopify store, then use the blogging service on Shopify. If you have a WordPress store, then of course go for WordPress. If you sell on Etsy, I would set up my own blog on WordPress. That's really what I would do. And then I've linked back to my Etsy shop and linked from Etsy to my blog. So the two are linked. Uh, but I always recommend SiteGround as my favorite ever hosting provider. Firstly, because the price is just really reasonable for the service that you get. They will back up everything. The It's safe. Like, I mean, it's really it's a really great service. And also because their support team is so friendly and so responsive. You get on the live chat 24-7. In less than 30 seconds, someone is there to help you. And it's not if you, it's someone that speaks perfect English. That's not going to try to overwhelm you with techie things. And if you get stuck, need help, they usually get in there with you and try to help you do stuff. So they're a great, great service. They're called SiteGround, SiteGround.com. And uh, that's what I would recommend you start with. And they can install WordPress on your domain and your hosting for you as well. So you don't have to do much except just picking a theme and start blogging. <laughs> um, Wendy, thanks, Deb. Um... And then who do you recommend again for the blog that's deeper? So is that about the jewelry blog I keep on talking about? If so, I didn't recommend it as in how to blog, but just because someone was asking about a jewelry blog. And so it's a, a jewelry designer called Megan Oman. And Oman is A-U-M-A-N. If you just Google that, she'll be first answer in the in Google results. Uh, SiteGround, that's right, Deepa, that's the one I go for. I love them. I absolutely love them. And I recommend them to everyone. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so you guys, I'm, uh, I can't scroll back past Wendy uh, comment on Facebook where she say, thanks, Deb. So I'm a bit stuck with that because I know there's a lot of comments. Uh, the way it's set up on my computer, though, I can't scroll back to all the old ones, which is a little bit annoying. But I have hope I've answered a lot of questions with the questions I had in the Facebook group. And I've also... Uh, done my well, if I could really to answer your question as we were going live. There was a lot coming through, so I'll make sure that when I log off, uh, I first go and have breakfast and then I'll come back and answer all of your questions and comments on uh, the Facebook page and on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for being here with me. As always, if this was helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, follow, and do all of these uh, beautiful things. If you, uh, and I'll just show you this quickly actually, where is it? If you don't have access to my free resource library as well, lots of worksheets, guides, ebooks, and things to help you start, grow, and scale your handmade business at the address that you can see on screen. I can never do this properly here. Um, if you want to subscribe to get access to it for free. And I will see you next Tuesday with a new video. And in between that, I'm always available on the Facebook group to chat. So thanks for being here with me. I will see you next week. And have a beautiful evening for you guys in um, America, night in Europe, and day in Australia. Boy, boy, and see you next week. Bye.